Well hey guys, it is 7demo7 7 and this is my FX61 Phantom from Hobby King. This is going to be intended as a long range airplane. This is going to be first in a series of um, a few videos of the build here. Step one is going to be and just uh, obviously the build uh, and a few of the components and we're going to get right into it. The motor that I've chosen is the Turnigy AeroDrive SK3. You know, the size is a, is a 35, 36, 1400 kV motor. So I've had very good luck with this brand of motor in the past. So I'm hoping that indeed this will be the great motor for the Phantom. As far as servos are concerned, I went with these Vigor um, 10 gram servos, um, Metal Gear. I'm hoping that they're a little higher quality and I uh, will be up to the task of this larger airplane. So I went just uh, slightly bigger. At the servos fit the, the cutouts just perfectly, so um, that's what I went with. This is the Arcbird OSD, which also has GPS with return to home. Now this is also going to be linked in with the AAT antenna tracker from Arcbird as well. Okay, so this is my power source here, the Multistar 4000 milliamp 3S pack. Uh, I'm gonna double these up for 8000 milliamp. Um, these are a great size. I do understand that they are a low discharge rating, but um, I'm gonna do some testing to see how they um, output. I'd uh, be very curious to see. And if they work, they work. If they don't, they don't. Okay guys, so this is the beginning of the build video. Um, if you are into this airplane or you wanna just know a little bit more about it, this is the video that you should be watching because it's going to be a long one. <laughs> um, I'm just going to go over most of the building process steps. Uh, the first step here is to glue in the uh, carbon fiber, the 3K um, carbon fiber spar here. So buckle up guys, it's going to be a long, long watch here. <laughs> uh, my voice droning on here. Um, obviously here I'm just roughening up the carbon fiber surface that'll give the glue a little bit more to bite into. So I am running all this at twice the speed just to kind of go through everything uh, a little faster. All right guys, so um, my preferred glue for foam has always been foam tack. Um, it's a wonderfully adhesive bond once you get it uh, set up. So what I'm doing here is I'm kind of tacking up the glue, which means you press the contact cement together, then you lift it up and you, um, you let it dry for between like a minute or so. And here I'm, I'm just checking to make sure that I have 24 millimeters sticking out both sides because you want to make sure you glue it, glue it in the center, obviously. So I just pushed it back down. And I think I'm rolling it a little just to make, and just checking one more time. All right, and it's pretty in there once you get it tacked up and then back in. So I, I let that dry uh, on the side while I do some other things here. Guys, now we're moving on to the servos. These are the Vigor 10 gram servos, Metal Gear, and um, what I'm doing here is just uh, centering up the servos um, with my servo tester. If you guys don't have a servo tester, it's one of the most key components that you can possibly have in your armamentarium. Um, so make sure you guys have one and make sure you guys have a good one. Um, what I'm doing is just uh, putting on the servo heads and whatnot. All right, so just seating the servos into the pockets here and running my wires. Um, you know, the wires are a real nice fit. They get, uh, slide right in there, no problems. Um, I always, always, always use hot glue on the servos. Um, it's a good secure fit, and if you ever need to replace a bad servo or damaged servo, all you need to do is use a couple drops of denatured alcohol, and it'll pop that servo right out of there. The glue releases very, very easily. So. Um, so yeah, grabbing the control arms um, with the clevises on the end, uh, just so they're ready to go, and also the control horns uh, that go into the wing, into the ailerons. I am using foam safe CA on the control horn, and also using uh, kicker as well. So just placing those in. Uh, holding it for a few seconds and it's a pretty good um, fit there. I might actually, because this is a FPV plane and it's going to be going uh, possibly long distance, uh, I'm probably going to take a sheet of fiberglass and, um, and glass over the top of that just so we don't have any uh, control horn failures. I do prefer the ones that go all the way through with screws 
um, just to be extra extra safe you never want a failure in the middle of uh, a flight so here I go with my hot glue obviously you're gonna do this to both servos so um, don't be shy guys get the hot glue in there uh, use a lot uh, make sure that those servos aren't gonna come off in fact um, if, to be extra safe I will probably put tacking packing tape over the top of the servo just to make sure in case the servo or excuse me in case the um, the hot glue fails for any reason okay guys at this time I'm installing my control rods um, of course my servos are centered and I'm just lining up the edge of the foam at the end which you can't see but basically getting it as close as I can so um, that's a pretty easy step here I am gluing in my snaps for the posterior section of the uh, canopy and I'm tacking it in like I did with everything else in this project uh, using foam tack after about the third tack it becomes almost impossible to uh, remove here I am um, ins I'm installing the prop adapter to the end of the motor um, you should always use thread lock on this step here. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. I don't have thread lock on me because I forgot to take it uh, back to my office here. Just doing a little test fit here and I, I'm finding that the motor wires facing the direction that they currently are is not going to work because uh, I need to pass the motor wires back into the airplane um, the opposite direction so what I do here is I actually head over to my handy Dremel and I cut out that little section right there so I can pass the wires through now I know a lot of you guys will be like well you just weakened your motor mount but though it's weak anyway um, I actually am not going to use this motor mount uh, in the long run I have a aluminum uh, one on order from CNC uh, was it smallpartscnc.com so I will put a link in the description uh, to that part that I am using. So, so there I am. I just I passed the wires through. It's a big motor, so it's a hard pass through. That's why I had to take the Dremel to it. So, taking a look at the uh, test fit there, making sure everything fits really nice before I decide to glue it in, which I'm just about to use some foam tack to do that as well. So I'll let you guys watch that. You do have to. Um, discern what is the top and bottom section of the motor mount because there is a top and a bottom to it. Uh, once again putting the foam tack on and I'm going to tack it up in just a moment. Tacking it up just means you press it together uh, for about 10 seconds or so. You lift it up for about 30 seconds, tack it back down and down one more time after you're done. So That's the nature of contact cement. You'll see here I'm pressing it in place, pressing it as hard as I can, pulling it apart, and it's giving me lots of resistance. About 10 seconds or so, and back down, and it should be pretty well stuck. Holding it for a good few seconds. When you are separating it, what you're doing is degassing it, and you're activating the chemicals that are actually keeping, um, that are actually not allowing the glue to set up. So when you tack the glue by separating the two pieces, you're actually beginning that bonding process by oxygenating it. And pretty boring here, just adding the top half of the motor mount. Alright. Um, just checking out the canopy here, snapping it into place. Just test fitting everything. I'm going to go over the top of these carbon spars uh, with a little bit of CA. I, of course, did the foam tack underneath, CA on the top, just to give it a little extra added security. I'm going to spray that with the, um, the kicker, of course. All right, as far as uh, these uh, vertical stabilizers, um, you want to just glue them onto the main body and do not glue them to the wing because if you glue it to the wing, your wing will no longer be removable. And that is the whole point of this version 2 of this airplane. It is much more user friendly as far as sticking it into your car. 61 inch wing is quite a hard thing to put in most cars. So here it is. You just, um, here I'm putting the foam tack on both sides. 
I'm going to tack it up one more time, just like we have in the rest of the video. I'm holding it in place there. Like I said, this is like a double time, sped up by two times. And just waiting about 30 seconds or so, placing it back on. I think I only tacked this one time. I probably should have done it twice, but it was feeling so, it was just like a, such a strong bond, I decided not to take it off again. So We'll see how strong that, that lasts. I'm actually considering embedding my video transmitter into one of the vertical stabilizers. I might do that. Uh, the wind res resistance might change the aerodynamics too much for that, though. All right, so inserting wings, easy as pie. You just slide the carbon tube into the carbon, excuse me, the carbon rod into the carbon tube, and you need to make uh, a, a you need to take something sharp and right in the middle of that piece of wood there uh, you need to make a hole through the foam so that the screw will go through and I think I take a uh, small 1.5 millimeter allen key just push it right through gives it a nice path to go through insert the wing again super easy push it right through and there is the wing retention uh, screw, which um, clasps down onto that carbon rod, um, uh, securing the wing. So as you guys know, I'm going to be using the ArcBird OSD and the ATT antenna tracker with this. So I'm going to do a maiden flight without uh, a, a flight controller or um, OSD, just a line of sight uh, test first. Um, that'll be the second part of this video, um, putting the, in the electronics and testing everything uh, but I am going to do my maiden first without uh, any stabilization I want to get a feel for the airplane of how it flies uh, line of sight which should be pretty good uh, and here I am needing to put in some um, some servo extensions to bring it through the uh, end of the airplane here and that is pretty much it my friends so this is part one uh, stay tuned for part two and possibly part three um, I'm going to be taking this build slowly, um, baby steps, one thing at a time, uh, detailing each step along the way. So hopefully you guys will enjoy the journey. Uh, here's the end of my building day here, and you're going to see just a little bit of a sneak peek of the inside electronics here, starting to lay things out. And I will see you guys on part two. Um, you guys have a great day, and I'll see you later. Bye.